is the engine that makes Xavier go. She leads the team in assists and is also second in the Big East Conference in assist to turnover ratio. Yeah, Leah Dunham has been consistent, and that's what the Musketeers need tonight. They need scoring, they need consistency, and they'd love a win here at home in front of their home fans. It's Big East Women's Basketball next on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. You're watching Xavier Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Paul Fritschner, Rich Hoyt back with you for Xavier and Villanova. Just a minute away from tip-off here on the Big East Digital Network. And Rich, this one tonight should be a good one between, like you mentioned in our open, a couple of teams playing hard for maybe different reasons. And we take a look at the starting lineups. See there the Villanova Wildcats starters for Villanova. Cameron Onk and Bridget Hurley, Raven James, Manny Segrist, and Mary Gadeka. Manny Segrist having a phenomenal season this year. And then on the other side for the Xavier Musketeers, Aaliyah Dunham, Lauren Wasselson, Morgan Sharps, Courtney Pranger, and Ayanna Townsend may be noticing a significant omission. Ari Gray out with a concussion. She will not be playing tonight. It was cleared to practice, but will not be in the lineup tonight. And then tonight, Rich, your keys for the Villanova Wildcats. Well, I think for Villanova, it's got to be a dynamic trio. They need a third scoring option to go along with Mary Gadeka and Maddie Seacrest. And also, yeah, they need some consistency from Bridget Hurley. And they need to keep Xavier off the board. Xavier had an outstanding rebounding performance against Butler last Friday. And on the other side, Rich for the Musketeers. Well, I think Xavier needs to go four quarters. They are 17 and 19 in quarters in Big East play, but yet only have one win to show for it. I think they need to limit Villanova's field goal percentage as well to deny that dynamic duo, Gadeka and Segris. If I think if they can keep them under 40 points, yep. they got a great chance yep. tonight. Set for tip, we have a great officiating crew here tonight. D. Canner, Karen Pereno, and Jeffrey Smith. As Xavier wins the tip, we're underway just past the 7 o'clock hour here local time in the Queen City in Cincinnati. Xavier in the white jerseys, Villanova in the blue. Xavier going down low, getting on the board first. Courtney Pranger finishing from the right side of the hoop. Oh, with Ari Gray out, Ayanna Townsend, Courtney Pranger getting more playing time. You can see them develop. Xavier playing a matchup zone here to start. Leah Dunham going to chase. Villanova swinging the ball around. Hurley cross-court pass. Segrist underneath. It's Gadeka through contact, but she can't finish. Townsend rips it down. I think you'll see Xavier mix up their defenses yeah. tonight, try to throw Villanova off. Musketeers need to be patient. Talk to Coach Moore, and that was one thing she stressed as Villanova knocks the ball out of bounds. See Harry Peretta there in his 42nd and final season as the leader of the Villanova Wildcats. Such a joy to talk to, Rich. Peretta, great with us yesterday on the phone. Pranger can't dial it up from long range. Yeah, Harry was a lot of fun <laughs> yeah, to talk. He was. It was really neat to see, you know, just kind of where he started with his career, 
you know, 42 years ago at Villanova as a 22-year-old. And Peretta was hired at Villanova, took the job over the St. John's, or excuse me, the St. Joe's job. Jim Foster got that job, and Gino Ariema was Foster's assistant at Villanova at St. John at St. Joe's at the time. Yeah, the, the history there, the basketball in the Philadelphia area, you know, certainly legendary, and Harry Peretta is a big part of that. Travel in the middle of the paint from Townsend. Xavier can't respond from that three ball from Matty Segrist. In that last possession, Segrist giving Villanova the lead. First time tonight, Segrist such a scoring threat. She's second in the NCAA as freshmen are concerned at 13th overall and scoring at over 20 points a game. Xavier in a 2-3 zone. Might stretch that out to looks like a 3-2. Bridget Hurley knocking one down from the corner. She had six assists on January 12th, the last time these two teams played. Villanova leads the all-time series 13 to one. Xavier's only win back on New Year's Eve of 2015. Pranger underneath the reverse for two. Courtney Pranger continues to develop. She had a career high 11 points at Butler last Friday night, added seven rebounds. You know, not just with Ari Gray out, but Sarah Leyendecker who a big that had continued to get better for Xavier. She's out as well. Villanova able to keep the possession alive off the offensive board. An extra possession. See here what they can do with it. Wildcats being patient. Down low. Seeger is too strong on the baby floater. Aliyah Dunham will walk it up for the Musketeers. Now the difficult thing about playing against Villanova is they move the ball so well. It doesn't matter whether you play in man or zone, just move the ball extremely well. A Harry Peretta staple. It's Sharps with four on the shot clock. Now Wasselson, she loses it. Gonna have to throw it up to beat the buzzer. And not able to get it off, a shot clock violation for the Musketeers. And you see Mel Moore in her first season at the helm for the Xavier Musketeers. Xavier with a 2-19 and overall record, 1-9 and in the Big East, but not really indicative of where this team is. They've been so close in so many games. Well, Melly Moore is as optimistic as it gets. You know, you'd never know whether she had two wins or 20 wins after talking with her today, and you know, she said they're coming off their best week of practice on the season. Great move by Sharps. Strong Sharp. take for Morgan Sharps to knock this one at six. You could tell talking to Coach Moore, the culture change as Villanova misses on a three. The culture change that needed to happen for this program to start to turn things around. And you can see, and that was evident in our conversation with her, that now with her best week of practice in early February is Aaliyah Dunham able to hit it from the wing, 4-3. Xavier has the lead back at 9-6. to six. Well, there's there certain things that Melanie Moore is trying to establish. Even bigger problems, and we celebrate together. Ignite change, go Nova. I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Hartford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon, and I chose, I chose, I chose, I chose Xavier University for business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public, computer science, because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus, to the people, the sports. I came here to be a musketeer and now, and now I am, I am, I am all for one. We're all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're going to work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. 
Paul Fritschner, Rich Hoyt here at the Cintas Center. Villanova and Xavier in a tight one early on. Xavier by three. Both these teams shooting well from beyond the three-point range. But Villanova, they're led by Harry Peretta in his 42nd season at the helm. Rich, and he's seen it all in his time with the Wildcats. Yeah, hard to believe. 1978, he was hired at the age of 22 years old. And... Almost 800 victories, the third most all time. That's Big East wins for both men and women. And when you have names like Jim Calhoun and Jim Beheim, and of course Gino Ariema right there, that's big time company. And of course, uh, I mentioned 22 years old, straight out of college, started coaching uh, JV men's basketball at his alma mater, Lycoming, as as a student assistant. He was injured. Early on in his freshman year, he knew that he wanted to coach right away. So uh, his coach kind of hired him on to, to assist on his staff right away. And you could tell he's a basketball lifer in talking to him. There's no quit. He wants to stay around the program, stay around the Wildcats. You can tell how invested he is in this Villanova team. Yeah, it's really interesting what he told you. Know, he's been a head coach his whole career. He never really, I mean, he had that brief stint at Lycoming as a, as a men's assistant. But he was a student at that time. He said he, was, he wouldn't mind being an assistant for somebody else now. So uh, I said if he, some high school in Philadelphia <laughs> picks him up, that would be a, a pretty good uh, pickup for your staff. He said his son is a high school coach. You might have to hop on that staff. Yeah. I said if nothing else, you can go out and scout for him a little <laughs> bit. Ask Coach Peretta how he motivates his players, and he says, I often have to tell them how good they aren't to keep them down to earth. Offered some advice at the end of the phone call to you and I, Rich, to say, <laughs> well, when you go on the broadcast tomorrow, just remember as announcers how good you aren't. Yeah, well, that's pretty sound advice, I'd say, <laughs> for both of us, right? I've kind of known that my whole career. I'm a little bit older than you, Paul, so I, I, I've, <laughs> I've, uh, I've kind of been put in my place a few times. So, But no, it, it, he, he, is, he is such a treat. Asia Ross into the game for the Musketeers, checking in at the last timeout. Gets on the scoreboard promptly. The layup from the right side to give the Musketeers a five-point lead. Some substitutions in for Xavier Carey Gross in, along with Ashley Gomez. On the other side for Villanova. You see Kenzie Gardler into the game. Kadeka bringing it out. Here's Gardler. Now it's Segrist. Gardler again. Floating it down low on the baseline at the buzzer for the shot clock. Segrist too short for Gomez. Get the rebound. Musketeers flush out for their offensive possession. Nearly a quarter gone by already. And a flash here at the Cintas Center. Well, Segrist struggled from the field in that game against Seton Hall, the loss that Villanova had on Sunday. And off to a little bit of a slow start here this evening as well. Gomez losing her footing. Brooke Mullen in for the Wildcats. Onkin will go take a breather. Mullen, a 5'11 freshman guard from Pennsylvania. Impressive high school career, over 1,300 points. Of course, Mullen has a missed shot there by Leah Dunham. Mullen's got some big East roots as well. Her uncle, Chris Mullen, former St. John's great. Ever heard of him? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he could fill it up. Kenzie Gardler off the back iron. Deja Ross the rebound for the Musketeers. 60 seconds left here in the first quarter. So you were doing a really nice job of making Villanova go one and done. Courtney Pranger in for Xavier. Takes Townsend out of the game. Xavier shooting 66% right now from three, which is a number that they can sustain, two for three. When you keep a number around 50%, 40% the rest of the night, things are looking good for the Musketeers. Now both of these teams average about seven three-pointers a game. I think that could go a long way, that, that number to tell who's gonna win this game. Gross trying to thread the needle, finds the bottom of the backboard. Now Gadeka. Gardler, middle of the lane, good passing, but a deflection from Xavier creates another turnover, and Villanova's scoring drought 
continues. Nice active hands that time by Courtney Pranger forced that turnover. We see something here that I think we're going to see from Xavier with a, a short bench. They just have eight. Mel Moore really likes to get up and, and, and push it, but she's going to have to slow it down. And Carrie Gross with a nice mid-range jump shot. Yeah, the defense sagging off, and Gross said, if you're going to give me some space, I'll take it. And now Villanova can hold for the final shot if they want it. Ten seconds remaining in the quarter. Shot clock is off. There's Gadeka off the back iron. Rebound by Pranger, knocked out by Gadeka. Less than a second remaining. And Townsend, make it Dunham will just hold it. And Xavier at the end of one, Rich, up by seven. You're watching Xavier Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Hartford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business. Chemical science. Occupational therapy. Philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus. To the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. All right, we got to be all in, all in, all right? But we got to make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. Xavier without their best player tonight. Ariana Gray out with a concussion, but the Musketeers still up by seven and looking to split the season series in the second matchup here tonight, Rich. Yeah, they've been outstanding defensively. That Their zones have, have really uh, confused Villanova a little bit, and Villanova just has missed some shots from the perimeter. Yeah, last time these two teams met, Villanova got off to a really fast start Xavier couldn't catch up. They played evenly the rest of the game. But Villanova won that first quarter 21 to 6, and that was what propelled them to that 12-point lead. Yeah, Xavier was 2 for 16 in that yeah. first quarter of play. They were down by 17 at the half, and it was just playing catch up from there. It was too much to catch up on a, on a, a good Villanova team. And Maddie Segris had an outstanding game that first time around 23 points, 16 rebounds. So, uh, with with the zone that Melanie Moore is, has decided to throw in there tonight, you know, I, I think it's it's kind of confused Villanova. The angles just are a little bit different. We've seen uh, Villanova miss some shots, some tough shots because of those angles. Villanova with the basketball to start the second quarter. Taking a lot of shots from deep. They haven't really been filling it up. All night points for beyond the arc. Wildcats look at this cross-court pass, draw that defense. No offensive rebound for the Wildcats. Well, I mentioned Xavier's rebound well. We see the travel there by Gardler. Xavier's really rebounded well out of that zone most of that first quarter. We see Villanova gets an offensive rebound to start, but no harm to Xavier. Xavier with a rebounding margin of five right now. 12 to seven to start, but a couple of offensive boards for both teams. Xavier now with ball for the first time here in the second quarter. Gomez off a screen. Getting down to Ross, she'll just 
square it up and drop it through the hole for two. Xavier now with a nine-point lead. Taser Ross has struggled, especially offensively this season, but she's off to a great start this evening. Xavier firing on all cylinders right now. You can see the defensive communication for the Musketeers as yet another turnover. Kringer able to step in front, and Sharps will bring it up. Elbow jumper gets a friendly roll. That's Carrie Gross's game right there. She loves that mid-range game, and Villanova has got to get in her shooting pocket in that area. Five different Musketeers have scored tonight. Erlehi with six and Gudeka, excuse me, Segris with three for the Wildcats. And another three ball falls this time for Brooke Mullen. Cuts the Villanova deficit to eight. Family Cheen's able to yep. shoot that <laughs> shot, no doubt. Rose turn in the corner, down low to Pringer, dribbles once and is fouled on the way up. Earner a trip to the strike. That's great early post position by Courtney Pringer. See right there, she had Gedeka right on her backside, right in the middle of that lane and was able to get an angle and no choice but for Villanova to foul. Make her earn it from the line. She makes the first. Dunham leading the way with six right now for Xavier, but Pranger can tie her with this free throw, which she does. Xavier at nine for 16 from the field, two for two from the line, and two for three from beyond the arc. Musketeers extremely efficient offensively so far, something we have not seen a whole lot of this season. And the other thing too, Rich, is in our conversation as we see Gadenka again, that's back-to-back -back threes for Villanova. Is Villanova now with 15 points all from downtown. But in our conversation with Harry Peretta yesterday, he was saying that in their first matchup, it felt like Xavier had a lot of high shot, uh, excuse me, high percentage shots but they just didn't fall. Mm -hmm. And now tonight you can see a lot of those shots are falling. Yep, no question. Take to the bucket. Wildcats losing the basketball, scramble for it, and Ross is there to pick it up. The game is so much easier when the ball goes through the net. Whether you get good shots, when you get good shots, sometimes they go in and the game looks difficult. Sometimes they don't go in, or sometimes they don't go in and it's difficult. Cross-court pass into the near corner. The lane for Herlihy. Feeds, nice. beautiful feed across the lane to Gadeka. And that's the first bucket for Villanova inside the three-point arc. That's two seniors that have played together for a while right there. And all of a sudden, it's down to a five-point game. This is where if you're Villanova, just stay poised. One of those shots will fall eventually. Less than 10 on the shot clock. Down to five, Dunham turns the corner. Pranger with a left hand for two. Nice job by Aaliyah Dunham to turn that corner, draw some attention to her, and a nice dump off. Yeah, you could see, didn't get panicked with the shot clock going down to zero. She instead dropped that pass down, got the high percentage shot for the Musketeers. Yeah, that's just great point guard play by Aaliyah Dunham. We've seen that a lot. You know, she's. I mentioned second assist to turnover ratio in the Big East. If it weren't for Kelly Campbell, who leads the country in that number, then Leah Dunham would be number one. Kadeka getting another offensive rebound and the second chance point for Villanova. It's a third offensive rebound and now some second chance points. It's a five point game. And Mary Kadeka off to a good start. Seven points, six rebounds already. Pranger can't finish off the great find. Villanova can make it a one possession game. Xavier still staying in that zone. 
They go the Wildcats down the lane and a foul on the Musketeers. That's Courtney Pranger. Yeah, I was just getting ready to say, Paul, that Xavier has not had a foul yet today. It's only the second foul called all night. Yeah, I, I just I don't think Villanova's been aggressive enough offensively. That time they are. Maddie Segrist gets rewarded. We'll go to the free throw line. Might be tuning in and seeing the 509 left in the second quarter. Well, really haven't had a lot of stoppages. One foul on Villanova and one foul on Xavier through the first quarter and a half. Well, the good news for Melanie Morris, the, the way the game's going, she's not going to be in the same situation she was last Friday with seven players available, yes. three of them fouling out. Yes. The last one, I believe it was Aaliyah Dunham right at the end of regulation. She had four, or excuse me, at the end of overtime, she had four players on the floor yep. to end that overtime period. Xavier in a battle of attrition with some injuries this year. Pranger able to keep it alive, but the Wildcats this one going out of bounds. Xavier Villanova now down to a one possession game. Three point lead for the Musketeers. And it's raining early and often from downtown in the Sintas Center tonight. You're watching Villanova women's basketball on the Big East Digital Network. What is a Villanovan in 30 seconds? Well, Villanovans aim high. Top 50 national university high. We think fast and stay connected. V's up. Villanovans think deeply, push boundaries, and go, go, go! Still with me? We climb corporate ladders in these ladders. This campus is our home, but you can find us almost anywhere. Villanovans have big hearts to solve even bigger problems, and we celebrate together. Ignite change. Go Nova. All right, we got to be all in. All in, all right? And we got to make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. Xavier with a strong first quarter at 16 to nine, but Villanova a resurgent second quarter to bring it back to a one possession game. 24-21, Xavier with a three point lead right now. We'll take a look, not too far away, less than a month from now already, Rich, the Big East Women's Basketball Tournament. Tickets for the 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament are on sale now through the Xavier Athletics Ticket Office. All session ticket packages are just $50 and include every game of the tournament, which you can see right there will be held March 6th to the 9th at Wintrust Arena up in Chicago. Get tickets now at gozavier.com backslash Big East WBB. Coming right down the home stretch. Well, and Paul, I think that Big East tournament this year is going to be extremely interesting because, you know, the past few years, DePaul and Marquette have been really the favorites. You know, you kind of expect it for them to be in the finals with the groups that they have. But, you know, while DePaul's got a two-game lead in the regular season, I don't think they're uh, vastly uh, better than, than everybody else in the league. And I think there's a lot of teams that could sneak in there and win. You know, you've got four teams right now that I think could, right, they have an argument of being in the NCAA tournament. And, you know, that number could even go up. So there's a lot of basketball that's going to be left to be played. And you know, a lot of parity. I think, in these teams in the Big East Conference this year. A yeah, big night of women's hoops tonight around the Big East. John Fanta with you for DePaul and St. John's. That one's in Queens. Then Matt Schumacher and Kim Adams have the game on FS2 between Marquette and Seton Hall. Joe Tartamellis got his St. John's team playing a little bit better. They're one of those four teams that I think are in that discussion for an NCAA tournament bid. Going over.
Silver retaining possession here. But Xavier the steal off the inbound. Carey Gross sneaking in. Now Villanova has just been uncharacteristically soft with the basketball tonight. Just too many turnovers. They're already six for the Wildcats. Here's Dunham into the corner. Sharps for three. And it's a six-point lead for Xavier as Sharps as her fifth point of the night. Every team needs somebody like Morgan Sharps that could just stand out there and drain threes. And Sharps is a phenomenal shooter. Down the lane goes Herlihy. She is up to eight for the night. Leading scorer for the Wildcats this evening. Yeah, Bridget Hurley, Hurley, he has played outstanding tonight. Gary Gross with the left hand. Can't sneak it in the back side of the hoop. Hurley, he skip pass to James. James again, middle of the lane, outside. Three ball, Mullen. An air ball off the right side. But again, an offensive rebound. Shot clock didn't reset. Down to four. A hustle play for the Musketeers. Dunham sliding to swipe it away. Another turnover for Villanova. Well, I was getting ready to say a great play by Mary Gadeka to keep that one alive. And then I saw some play by Xavier. Step back. Dunham. <laughs> Leah Dunham providing some offense tonight. Eight points for the point guard. Villanova settling down as we approach the end of the first half. Less than two and a half to go. Long three ball from Raven James around and out. Raven James not known as a three point shooter. And more known for her defense. With passing and a court vision. Sharps, elbow jumper. The Musketeers go on a little run to extend that lead back out to eight with under two to play. You know, Xavier just looks comfortable at the offensive end. They've just been in a, a rhythm. They've had a great pace to their offense. They're getting great shots. And it seems like they're comfortable with letting Villanova settle. Yeah. Yeah, that zone, even though Villanova has made some threes, they've got five of them. You know, they're content with, with being in that zone. They're going to want Villanova to keep shooting them. Sharps short. Last touched by Kerry Gross, the Musketeers. Wasselson and Pranger back in for Xavier. Maddie Segrist in for Villanova alongside Kenzie Gardler. Villanova hasn't scored in two minutes and 14 seconds. And that's the third scoring drought tonight over two minutes for the Wildcats. Only two fouls have been called in this first half. One on each team. Remarkable. Not, yeah, it is. Another three and another miss for Villanova. They have open three. Xavier is willing to concede the three. Wasserson trying to answer. That one's blocked, but it stays in bounds. Segrist will jog it into the front court. You can see Xavier's content to let Villanova take the open three. Mm -hmm. Villanova yet to make them really pay for it. Yeah, ideally they want to contest, but I'd rather have that than something easy around the basket. There's Segrist. Nobody there to block out Segrist, and she knows what to do with that one. Yes, yeah, stick to itiveness by Segrist. What a freshman year she is having. One of the best freshmen in the entire country. Of course, Segrist leads the Big East in scoring second and rebounding. Danger Ross. Ross trying to recover on defense, but calling for the foul underneath. That's not a bad foul in that situation. Are they going to say it was two shots? Looks like they're going to say Segrist was going up for it when Gross came in. Excuse me, when Ross came in and swiped it away. Thought uh, they might get that one on the floor. And Segrist knocks down the first. You know, Harry Peretta admittedly said he didn't think Segrist was going to be this good 
This early said she's still got some things to work on, defensively rebounding, but she is a talented offensive player. Xavier with a six-point lead and can wait for the final shot with 10 seconds left. Dunham, a screen from Ross, tries to split. Six seconds for Dunham, step back. Dunham falling away, can't make the shot. Ball goes out of bounds, last touch by the Musketeers. 1.8 left for the Wildcats. Gardler will inbound. Herlihy on this near side, Segrist on the other side. Segrist catches, looks forward, and Villanova can't get a shot off. And at the half, Xavier by six at home, Rich. Well, the Musketeers have gotten a lot of great looks at the, the basket. Aliyah Dunham, senior point guard, leading the way for the Musketeers, and Deja Ross hot early on as well. You're watching Villanova Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. What is a Villanovan in 30 seconds? Well, Villanovans aim high. Top 50 National University high. We think fast and stay connected. V's up. Villanovans think deeply, push boundaries, and go, go, go! Still with me? We climb corporate ladders in these ladders. This campus is our home, but you can find us almost anywhere. Villanovans have big hearts to solve even bigger problems, and we celebrate together. Ignite change. Go Nova. I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Harford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon, and I chose, I chose, I chose, I chose Xavier University for business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public, computer science, because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus, to the people, the sports. I came here to be a musketeer and now, and now, I am, I am, I am, all for one. Back on the Big East Digital Network, Paul Fritschner and Rich White with you. Xavier with a six-point lead here at the half. Rich, Xavier has played very well with a slim six-point lead, but still playing very well here early. Yeah, really have shot the ball well. They've been comfortable offensively in the zone. has given Villanova fits as well. And now we take a look at the player of the week for the Big East. Some honors around the league. Kelly Campbell and Maddie Segrist honored for their play over the past week. And... I mean, what more can you say about these two? Well, uh, Kelly Campbell, I, I think, is the most underrated player in the Big East, maybe in the entire country, and I'm glad that she got the recognition that she has deserved after the triple-double. And Maddie Segris, a redshirt freshman, 17 and a half points a game, seven rebounds, two blocks, filling it up for the Wildcats. And then the rest of the weekly honors, the Big East women's basketball weekly honor roll, Kristen Spoljar, Olivia Elger, Selena Lott, Shadeen Samuels, such a star for the Pirates from Seton Hall. And then and we've seen her tonight, Mary Gadeka. Yeah, Kristen Spolier carrying the Butler Bulldogs. And Mary Gadeka, you're right. She has been phenomenal all year at the senior for this Villanova team. Yeah. And we'll be right back after this with some more news and notes around the league. And from here at the Cinta Center, Xavier up top by six at the half. National Girls and Women in Sports Day was this Wednesday, February 5th. The Big East Conference is proud to celebrate the strong and inspiring women participating and thriving across the sporting landscape. Hear from some of the women's basketball standouts across the league on their greatest female influence in sports. My greatest female influence in sports would be my older sister. She is a basketball player as well, and she plays at the collegiate level. And I also was able to always look up to her and admire her as a role model. She's faced a lot of adversity through the sport, so just having that connection with her has been really great. Serena Williams, um, she's opened up so many doors for women 
just in how she carries herself and like all the things that she has brought to her game in tennis, even endorsements and all the commercials and opportunities she's open for women. I think that would have to be Skylar Diggins. Just I love how um, she embodies herself as a woman and how she plays hard and she never steps down to anything. I really enjoy Sydney LaRue from the U.S. Women's National Team. I just actually watched her um, video series on her having a child and coming back from that. So I think just, I like how she has pursued and be a great leader on her team as well as a mother. Natisha Heidemann, because just because we knew each other for however many years and seeing her go to the league is just amazing. Allison Felix and Sabrina Williams. Those women are just amazing in the things that they do. They just continue to pave the way for myself and as a basketball player, athletes such as Maya Moore, Della Don, because I kind of try to mimic their style of play. On, on the court and off the court, they're just great women to look up to. I really hope to be just like them one day and all their success and also give back to the sport that they've played in. You're watching Xavier Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. Big East Fast Break is the weekly women's basketball show hosted by Megan Caffrey and Ashley Leotis breaking down everything in Big East women's hoops. We have a good one here, 33-27 Xavier at the Cintas Center. They broke down this game. You can catch all new episodes of Fast Break during the season every Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. on the Big East Twitter and YouTube pages. On this week's episode, Megan was joined by the Fox Sports analyst Kim Adams to break down the state of the league. Big East teams are on the back half of conference play with March implications on the line as we welcome in Fox Sports analyst Kim Adams. Kim, let's start at the top of the league and look at DePaul. The Blue Demons lead the conference at 10-1 and one, and in Monday night's NCAA tournament projections of the top 16 seeds, the DePaul Blue Demons checked in at a 14 seed. What do you make of what the Blue Demons have done so far this season? Well, I think anything that with DePaul and coach Doug Bruno, the word I always think of is consistency. So once again, DePaul has been consistent. Um, did they have that little slip up against Creighton? Yes, but I honestly think sometimes a loss like that can can help a little bit when you're really rolling along and you're winning games. Um, they had been undefeated in the league before that Creighton loss. So I think that can almost help you recalibrate at time, but they just have so many weapons, obviously all starting with Kelly Campbell, uh, this week's Big East Player of the Week after a, a triple-double. Um, but she's she's orchestrating everything. And then they just have so many scores. Um, Sonia Morris has made a big jump this year. Lexi Held, I think Lexi Held is a potential future Big East Player of the Year. Um, she's got probably the purest stroke, shooting stroke, I, maybe that I've ever seen across any level I've covered, um, WNBA, uh, men's college, women's college. Um, when you see her shoot, it's like, wow, that's a pure stroke. Um, so they just have so many guards. They don't have a ton of size, um, but they the way they play, they don't re really need to rely on any size. Um, the way they can just get up and down the floor, um, really get teams out of their comfort level. Uh, once that press comes on and they're forcing turnovers, um, you can get a signature DePaul run where if you're playing them, you might be down two, and then all of a sudden you look up and you're down 12. So again, I think that Creighton loss uh, may may have 
help them. On the topic of tournament projections and Charlie Cream's latest bracketology, both of those teams were included. There were two of four teams that Charlie Cream has in there, DePaul, Creighton, Marquette, and St. John's. What does that say to the depth of the league this year? Absolutely. I mean, I think it would be great for the league to get four, maybe even five teams in. Um, I like that those four teams are in. I think maybe a fifth could sneak in as well. Um, I think Seton Hall could make some noise. I think they're going to have to do a lot of work for the rest of Big East play. Um, they've been a little bit inconsistent, but but with that, you have those four teams in. So when you're playing against those four teams, that's a big chance to boost your resume with a win. Um, so I think a team like Seton Hall just has to recognize those opportunities that are ahead of them and that it's not just impacting that one game, um, but their chances of getting into March Madness. How about a team that's maybe surprised you this season with where they're at right now in the conference standings? I think it's absolutely Marquette. That was a team who is second in the standings and was picked ninth in the preseason poll. Um, and you think about all that they lost, all five starters who had all averaged a thousand points or more. Um, Alizé blocked in 2000 points. So they just, they lost an incredible amount. So to think, and not to mention their head coach, Carolyn Keeger. Um, so to think about the job that coach Duffy has done in her first year is pretty incredible. As we're on the back half of conference play now, Kim, these games are all the more important. And you look at the standings and you've got Two teams at seven and four, St. John's and Seton Hall. And then another tie at six and five, Creighton and Villanova. We're going into a really important weekend this upcoming weekend. What is What do these teams have to do to really get that win and be able to make a break away from these ties? Um, for what I've seen, a lot of these teams need to put together a full 40 minutes. Um, teams like St. John's, Seton Hall, who are currently – sitting in fourth and fourth and fifth. This is a huge weekend for them. Um, welcoming in the top two teams, DePaul and Marquette, and it's going to be on their home floor. Um, Seton Hall, I've had them a bunch this year, and you see glimpses of greatness. You see glimpses of, wow, this could be the second best team in the league. This team could beat DePaul, I think. Um, but then there's games where they come out slow. Um, we saw that against St. John's in the all-access game. I saw that the other day against Villanova. They were able to come back in that one. Um, but against a team like DePaul and Marquette, you can't dig yourself into a hole. Joe Tartamella, St. John's, he's actually the opposite. He's talked about the importance of his team closing games. Um, so I think this is a time where you have to lock in on a full 40 minutes. Um, you can't give up. You can't get lazy for three minutes against DePaul or they'll go on a 14-2 run. Kim Adams, everybody, you can catch her at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Friday night as Marquette visits Seton Hall. And then again on Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern with Villanova at Butler. Kim, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome, Megan. I'll uh, see you around at some of the games, I'm sure. We're all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Back on the Big East Digital Network, getting ready for the second half of action between Xavier and Villanova. I'm Paul Fritschner. This is Rich Hoyt. And Rich, it, it was a fun first half here at the Cintas Center. Xavier up by six, but the Musketeers lighting it up from yeah. around the court. Yeah, they've been really efficient with the basketball. They're shooting right around 50%. Only turned the ball over three times in that first half. As you take a look at those stats and the field goal percentage, I think is a big story. Xavier's just flat out shooting the basketball a lot better and Villanova a couple of three pointers uh, to help equal that out a little bit. And you look at the bottom seven turnovers for Villanova and Xavier 11 points off those seven turnovers. That's a huge number that Villanova is going to have to cut down on. Yeah, very uncharacteristic as well. I'm sure that's something that Harry Peretta is addressing during halftime and how to uh, attack that zone and 
Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Villanova go on a little bit of a run here at some point in the third quarter once they get a little bit more comfort against the zone. You saw those Villanova highlights in the first half. Threes and a lot of them. And on the other side for Xavier, they've been threes going down low in the post, filling it up. Yeah, it really, Xavier's gotten a lot of uh, good shots, and Courtney Pranger is, is one of them. She was three for six. She had eight points in that first half, and Aaliyah Dunham was able to knock down a couple shots. Deja Ross knocked down a couple shots. You see Ross again on the face-up. Villanova's just not, not tight enough defensively. They're just not getting into Xavier shooters as much and making it challenging on the Musketeers. And Villanova here in this second half, you could see Xavier was – giving Villanova some open looks from downtown and making Xavier try to pay. But Villanova, while they did hit five threes, they went cold in that second quarter from long range, and that was what was able to give Xavier the lead. Well, I think Villanova's going to have to hit three-pointers in order to win this game. They'll have to hit them here in the second half I, just because of what the zone is giving them at this point. I don't really expect Xavier to make many adjustments defensively, unless Villanova really starts to get on a roll. Downs it into the backcourt to Dunham, and we're underway in the second half. Xavier going right to left here in the white jerseys. Villanova in the blue. Townsend down low. Can't finish, but gets the foul. Great play to open up this second half off the screen. Yeah, a little UCLA screen by Xavier to Get that half started. Nice call by Melanie Moore. First foul on Gadeka. Townsend hits the first free throw. Townsend, a redshirt freshman forward, 6'2 from Pittsburgh. Knocks them both down. Stretch this lead out to eight for the Musketeers. Xavier won the first quarter 16-9, but Villanova a slim lead in that second quarter, 18-17. Xavier the bucket here to start the third. Kadeka passed up a three. An air ball from Onkin, but the follow and the finish for Segrist. Well, I think one of the, the things that Maddie Segrist has going for her is her knack to get offensive rebounds. She's second in the Big East Conference in offensive rebounds, three a game. Sharps halfway down and out, but a strong offensive rebound from Townsend to reset. Sharps for three. Halfway down and out again, two in a row, and you can hear the groans from these home fans. <laughs> That's a good shot, though. You know Morgan Sharps can knock that one down. Good feed to the middle of the lane, but Bridget Hurley, he can't find the bottom of the cup, then loses it. Wasselson there for the steal. Dunham into the front court for the Musketeers. Looks like Villanova might be going some zone here. Townsend drawing another foul on Maddie Segrist. There was only one foul called in the first half on Villanova as Townsend drives down the right side of the lane. I think it's a really smart move by Xavier to try to attack Matty Segrist as well. Talked about how Harry Preda really needs her to improve at the defensive end. It's an area of her game that she's really got to work on. Diana Townsend had that travel early on trying to drive the ball to the basket, but I think she's gotten a lot more comfortable in attacking since that one turnover. Townsend hits one of two. It's that second one. Seeger is driving instead of taking the three. Now it's James. Seeger is outside for her, Lahey. But what a tough shot for Segrist from the free throw line. Yeah, it was a tough shot, but you know what set that up was her cut. She just found a soft spot against that zone. It was a tremendous cut. Was able to catch it, get her shoulder square of the basket. Great balance. Segrist now up to 13 points on the night, Rich. 
first into double figures for either team. And after the slow start, she's kind of got things going a little bit now. Dunham with eight on the shot clock, misses with the left hand. And a rebound knocked out of bounds. Last touch by the Musketeers. And again, as you mentioned, maybe Villanova can put some stops together and go on a run here. Yeah, with see this Maddie's, last play by Segrist. Yeah, with Maddie Segrist, you can definitely go on some runs. Nice flash into that high post area. You can tell that Villanova's being a little more patient this quarter, Rich. Yeah, they are, and you know they know that they need to get some cuts into the lane to really open some things up. James driving the kick. Three on the shot clock. Off the window. Hurley. Well, Bridget Hurley is having some luck tonight, and she's, she's just knocking down shots. 11 points now for the senior. Another foul called on the floor. But how about this step back from Hurley for three? High off the window. That late shot clock situation. Hurley knew she had to get it up, and she'll take it. See Wasselson shaking her head. You have to say, what else do I have to do here? It's down to a two-point lead for the Musketeers. Need a bucket to stop the bleeding. Dunham loses it. Steal by the Wildcats. So now they can tie or take the lead. That's an uncharacteristic turnover by Aaliyah Dunham. Villanova has not had the lead tonight, but Segrist ties it up. Boy, Segrist has such a high release point, and she, when she catches it, she gets it up there so quickly. It's tough to block, tough to contest. Staying corrected, Rich, they did have the lead very early, way back in the first quarter, scored two threes to start the game. Xavier responded with a 7-0 run. And have not led since, but now they can take the lead here. All tied at 36, and we're locked in a good one here in Cincinnati at Xavier. Kadeka left wide open in the middle of the lane. Coach Melanie Moore forced to take a timeout for the Musketeers. Villanova on an 11-1 run over the last three minutes and 40 seconds, hit four shots in a row. And the Wildcats now with a two-point lead to flip the script. You're watching Villanova women's basketball on the Big East Digital Network. What is a Villanovan in 30 seconds? Well, Villanovans aim high. Top 50 National University high. We think fast and stay connected. V's up. Villanovans think deeply, push boundaries, and go, go, go! Still with me? We climb corporate ladders in these ladders. This campus is our home, but you can find us almost anywhere. Villanovans have big hearts to solve even bigger problems, and we celebrate together. Ignite change. Go Nova. We are all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go strong. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Back well, here at the Sinta Center. Rich, take us through this one. Well, you see that cut right there by Maddie Segris. It really opened things up. Hey, James was able to drive in right there, and that freed up Gadeka for a shot. But just something really simple, like a solid cut by somebody that wasn't even in the play there at the end. Doesn't get credit for the basket, doesn't get credit for the assist, but it was just an outstanding shot by Segris, and it, it all happened because 
she's off to a three for three start here in the second half. And you can see Dunham overextended on that defense too to open up the lane, give her some time to get that shot off. Yep, absolutely. Maddie Segrist making a huge difference at the offensive end here in the second half. Well, Rich, some exciting times here at the Cintas Center coming next season in the postseason. Next year, Cintas Center has been selected as a host site for the 2021 NCAA Women's Basketball Championship Regional Rounds. Save the date for March 26th through the 29th, 2021 for NCAA Women's Basketball at the Cintas Center. Tickets on sale, dates, and more information will be announced later this year, but what an honor here for the Cintas Center to host some NCAA tournament action. Yeah, of course, we've seen Xavier host some first and second round NCAA tournament action here in the past. And of course, Cincinnati played host to the Final Four back in 1997. Uh, but uh, I think this will be the first time that they've hosted the, uh, the regional rounds yeah. here in Cincinnati. So definitely an exciting time, an exciting time for Xavier University to be the host as well. And speaking of the NCAA tournament, some of the history between these two teams as you pointed out, this is the matchup of the only two teams as Townsend ties the game. These two teams that you're watching right now are the only two teams in the Big East that have been to the Elite Eight. Yeah, and all, both teams have been this century. Xavier has been 2001, 2010. And Villanova went in 2003. Really hard to believe they're the only yeah. two that has been there. You, Especially consider all the success that Paul has had. Marquette as well, yeah. some teams around the league. Gomez short with the three ball. And then a travel by Richard Hurley. Of course, there's a certain team that comes back into the Big East next season. It's had a little bit of history in the Elite Eight, UConn. Are they, are they good? <laughs> Harry Peretta's former assistant, Gino Ariema. Nice move there by Ayana Townsend out of the timeout. Townsend again, off the mark. Gomez, Deja Ross. And the ball knocked out of bounds. And that'll bring us to another timeout. Villanova will get the ball out of the break, but we're tied at 38. Don't go anywhere, folks. It's a great one in Cincinnati. Midway through the third on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching Xavier Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room, people, for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Coming down the home stretch of the Big East women's basketball schedule, Rich. Both these teams looking for some wins to shore up their schedule as we look ahead to the Big East tournament. But for the Wildcats, you know, cha challenging schedule. Marquette, DePaul, Butler, Creighton, Georgetown, Providence to round out their season. Yeah, both teams you'll, you'll see with Xavier's schedule. Both of them with Georgetown, Marquette, and DePaul all coming up on the schedule. Other side for the Musketeers. They'll go to Georgetown, 
or they'll welcome in the Hoyas on Sunday. Then Marquette, DePaul, Providence, Creighton, Seton Hall, and St. John's. Yeah, we talked about Marquette. How about the job that Megan Duffy yes. has done in her first yes. season at Marquette? Right in the hunt for the Big East, right there at the top. They were preseason picked ninth in the Big East Conference. And, you know, the job that she has done, they lost all five stars, a historic class last year from Marquette and really has just done a phenomenal job. Got them in an NCAA tournament discussion. All tied at 38 between Xavier and Villanova. Four and a half to play here in the third. Wildcats. Trying another three off the side of the backboard. Hurlicky though. Just to beat the shot clock off the left side of the rim, and Ashley Gomez, the rebound for the Musketeers. Villanova going to go back to that man-to-man. -man. Xavier's been successful attacking it, both off the dribble and into the post, particularly with Townsend. Townsend attacking, kicks to Ross. Now Dunham between the circles. Gary Gross, the lefty, to the bucket. Swatted away, but Ross there to collect. Now with five, Dunham. Step back again. Dunham too strong. Towns in the offensive board. And the Musketeers can reset. Dunham looks to the bench. Coach Moore puts up the play call. Gross now with three. Deja Ross off the mark. Towns in again the offensive wow. rebound. Boy, Ayanna Townsend has been terrific on the boards. Dunham down the left side of the lane and a foul on the floor. That'll go against Raven James. But that's the third trip, the third offensive chance on this trip for Xavier after two boards by Townsend. You know, we Ayanna Townsend missed a lot of last season, her freshman year, because of injuries. We saw some spurts really early on her that freshman year that she's capable of some of the things she's done her last few games, and she's just relentless on the boards, and she's finally starting to come around, get comfortable. Villanova saving it in, but it goes right into the hands of Kerry Gross. Shot clock situation. Nope, they're gonna reset it. Dunham floats it too strong, and Segrist controls, so Xavier had four <laughs> chances there, and was unable to score. Controlled the ball for almost two minutes. But now Gross stealing it right back. Fast break for Gross. Hits the shot and the foul to give Xavier the lead back. Another uncharacteristic turnover by Villanova. And Gary Gross is going to take it all the way. Not a very smart foul by James. James trying to recover, but Gross all the way to the rack for two. Sometimes we see Kerry Gross attack and really go right into the body of the defender and kind of throw up a shot. That time she used her right hand nicely, used that left shoulder to shield away from the defender. And Villanova, Rich, yet another scoring drought, this time over three minutes. And that has been what has really been the Achilles heel of this Wildcats team tonight. Yeah, they just haven't been consistent enough offensively. Three balls short. Pranger going in for the rebound and a foul on the floor. That'll go against Segris, and that's her third. Be interesting to see what Harry Peretta does if he tries to conserve Matty Segris' time. Looks like he might here. Segris, the team's leading scorer with 15. He might be getting her just for the rest of this fourth quarter or excuse me, third quarter, and have her ready to go with the fourth quarter, just ensure that she's just got three fouls to start. Klanger makes the first. Six-team foul on Villanova, sending Pranger to the line for two. This is the second, lost there. And he knocks it off early he's hand. Xavier retains the possession. Xavier's just bullying Villanova around down there, around the, the blocks on the rebounds. 
Sharps will trigger it in. Sharps working her way into the paint. Off the mark on the shot. Gadeka there on the rebound. I thought Sharps forced that one a little bit. Herlihy kick to James. The lefty down in the low post for Gadeka. Working against Pranger. Gadeka spins back through contact. Might have clipped Courtney Pranger on the eye. And no stoppage here yet. Decanter's got to stop the game. And Pranger will go out. Training staff on to assist. Looked like Pranger was hit around the left eye area. I think Melanie Moore is wanting the officials to look at that one, see the contact, we'll get a good look right here. That was just head to head, it looks like. Oh, right there, oh, all yeah. the way down, the left elbow. Yeah, that was incidental, though. Xavier with a two-point lead now. 90 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Gary Gross. Off the right, rebound by Onken and the Wildcats. And Gadeka fouled by Deja Ross. Whistle is tightened up here in the second half, but maybe not necessarily tightened up. More so as the defense has been aggressive and the offensive possessions have gone more toward the hoop than just settling for the threes. Yeah, I, I think you're right. We got a lot more activity around the basket. Another one that time by Hurley. Xavier called for the foul, sent Hurley to the line. But in the first half, you can see here on the replay, Hurley. Rich catching it on the low block. Yeah, Hurley with a big size advantage against Kerry Gross in there. She knew what to do with it. Gross had no choice. Just the second foul of the half by Xavier. Still just four fouls total for the game for the Musketeers. It's quite remarkable. Villanova just was seven, seven fouls and three quarters. You can see Harry Paredes sitting there, legs crossed at the end of the bench. Calm, Harry, cool, and collected. Harry's been sitting like that the whole game. <laughs> I don't know whether it's just because he's Calm, cool, collected, or he's he's been irritated for most of the night with the way that his team has played. Now Peretta stands up to call for Segrist to go into the game. Looked like Hurley he had to maybe replace a contact. Trouble with her eye. And Hurley he will shoot. And she makes the first. She can tie the game here with the second. And we're all tied at 42 with 60 seconds left in the third. Yeah, with a minute left, we'll see if anybody can get any momentum going into the fourth quarter. Xavier with three timeouts left. Villanova with four. Done on the Sharps. Three ball. Yes! And Xavier with a three point lead. Yeah, good look by Morgan Sharp. She used a nice head fake as well. And Villanova answer. Nine second difference between the shot and game clock. Low post for Hurley. Three ball. Gadeka off the mark. Deja Ross secures the board. Shot clock is off for the Musketeers. Rich, you asked for a momentum builder. Now Xavier get a big one here with a shot at the buzzer. Five seconds for Dunham, the hesitation, the shot, high off the glass, and the foul. Dunham strong to her feet. And a five-point lead for the Musketeers. Well, just a great move by Aliyah Dunham. Nice little crossover, high off. 
the bank board. Leah Dunham has been fantastic this evening. She's now got 10 points, six assists. Four and a half seconds left. Going over. Herlihy loses the basketball. Sharps picks it up. And at the horn at the third quarter, Xavier with a six point lead at 48 42. You're watching Villanova Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Harford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus, to the people, the sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now? And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Xavier looking for their second Big East win of the campaign with a six-point lead going into the final 10 minutes, Rich. Yeah, they just played better basketball tonight. They really have, and, you know, they, uh, they shot the ball well at times. Didn't shoot it well in that third quarter of play, just four out of 17, but they got to the free throw line. They were six for eight from the free throw line in that third quarter. Melanie Moore. Looking for her third win here in this first season at the helm of the Musketeers. Got a win in the season opener. It looked like that was going to be a big momentum builder for the Musketeers. But then Xavier on an extended losing streak didn't get another win until Big East play. Well, injuries have been such yes. a big story no, for, for sure. this team this year. Of course, they start the year. T. Owens, you know, a, a, a senior who has played so many big minutes. She started her entire sophomore and junior career injured from the beginning really just couldn't give them what they needed she's kind of retired from basketball at this point you lose that you know Ari Gray has missed several games and they, they've just had so many just little injuries here and there that have, have stopped any kind of rhythm that, that Melanie Moore could build with this team the entire team and it's been a challenge so now how can Villanova answer here taking a lot of threes tonight Working the ball down low, the left side of the backward Seagrist. But Villanova tonight, six for 24 from downtown. They hit five threes in the opening quarter. They've gone quiet since. Somehow they got to get Maddie Seagrist the ball in the high post area. There's Seagrist the steal in transition. Swings through and lays it in, and it's a four-point game. That's a great move by Seagrist. She is so polished. Harry Peretta said her, you know, she's a redshirt freshman. That redshirt year of just getting involved in the program and becoming familiar, so helpful for her. Kerry Gross losing it. And a foul on the floor. Kerry Gross called for that foul. First of the fourth quarter. Ashley Gomez will check in. Morgan Sharps. Raven James into the front court for Villanova. James for three. Yes! And it's a one point game. Every time Xavier punches, it feels like Villanova punches back. 
It has been a thriller here at the Centos Center tonight. You know, Raven James, big time shot. You know, she's a great distributor. She's got a great assist to turnover ratio, 1.7 to 1. Seventh in the Big East Conference, but gets some offensive production. Deja Ross off the right side of the rim, tried to chase her own rebound, then a foul called on the floor. That one going against Ross, which means Villanova now can take the lead. Three fouls on Deja Ross. Ross has really played well, six points, eight rebounds. Erlahi to James. Moving the ball quicker are the Wildcats now. Segris in the paint, and one! Boy, she knows what to do with the basketball. Extremely crafty. Great pass by James, and Segris goes right through two Xavier defenders, draws the contact, and is able to finish. Looked like Gomez may have even been caught off guard by that pass into the middle of the lane, and Segris fired up. Can give her Wildcats a two-point lead here. Free throw off the right side of the rim. Towns in the board for the Musketeers. Dunham, patience for Xavier. Now, Lauren Wasselson has been really quiet. Three ball off the mark, rebound by Hurley, outlet pass Numbers. to James. Numbers for the Wildcats across the way to Segrist. Too strong offensive board, Gadenka. That had to have been something, jump ball, travel, something. James for three, front rim no, and the rebound out of bounds. Go the way of the Musketeers, you see Peretta. Legs crossed and arm on the table. We are over three quarters into the game, and he's probably sat like that for two and a half quarters tonight. <laughs> probably a pose he's going to become really familiar with after this season's over with. Here's Wasselson, Rich for three, front rim. And no, and a rebound. Last touch by the Musketeers. Xavier really has just had no reason to get out of that zone, you know, despite Villanova starting to get comfortable against it. Spin the find to James. She drives with 10 on the shot clock. Gadenka for three. Too strong and a rebound. The foul going against the Wildcats. That's Raven James called. It's her fourth foul. That's big. That's one of your top defenders. Xavier in a bit of a drought right now, trailing by one. Need a score. Townsend off the window. Can't find it. And then Wasselson called for a foul on the rebound. It looked like a frustration foul. Yeah, if, if I'm not mistaken, too, Xavier's got four fouls this quarter. I think three of them have been underneath their own basket, 90 feet from Villanova's basket. Really, yep. really careless fouls. You, you've done a good job of not fouling all night, and then all of a sudden you've got three of them that are clearly the other end of the floor. Good day, Kirk. Job by Pranger cutting that drive off. The Gardler. Now Gadeka again. Attacks. Free throw line floater. No. Wasselson the board. Both these teams in a drought right now. Gadeka hasn't gotten comfortable all night. She's just got 11 points. I don't think she's left the floor either. Townsend, strong to the cup. No off the rim. Segrist, some numbers for the Wildcats. Segrist will just pull up from the elbow. Great decision. What a decision there for Segrist instead of attacking. 
just pulls up, takes the shot. Gets the friendly roll, and Xavier has a three-point lead. Excuse me, Villanova, the three-point lead. You're watching Xavier Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. I'm from Chicago. Cleveland. Phoenix. Milwaukee. Hartford. Colorado. Oklahoma. Thailand. Norway. Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business. Chemical science. Occupational therapy. Philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus. To the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. All right, we got to be all in, all in, all right? We got to make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Trust Arena. Get tickets now. There's 523 left here in the fourth, and Xavier has yet to score in this quarter. Villanova has opened on a 9-0 run in this final quarter of action. Well, tickets for the 2020 Xavier baseball season are on sale now. Season tickets are only $35 for every regular season home game at Hayden Field and include an exclusive season ticket holder gift. Single game tickets are also on sale, starting at just $3. Learn more at gozaver.com backslash baseball. But Villanova Rich on fire here in the fourth. 9-0 run to start. They have a three-point lead at 51-48. Well, it started with their defense, and Maddie Segrist has gotten active and involved this entire second half. She's 6 for 10. This half has 21 points now for the game. And Raven James lights it up from three right there, but she has distributed five assists here in the second half as well. All leading to Villanova's three-point lead. Xavier only shooting 18% in this second half. That's not going to get it done. No, it's not going to get it done at all. They, their, their shots have been well contested. And Villanova, I think, has stepped up their energy effort at the defensive end. We just we saw a lot of space you know, b between Villanova and Xavier shooters in that first half, and that space just has not been there. And, you know, what, what's going to be interesting, I think, is can Xavier get Aaliyah Dunham active here with Raven James on the bench with, with four fouls? Will they maybe try to attack Villanova a little bit with some ball screen action? Here's Dunham for three, way short. Rebound controlled by Mary Gadeka. That time they just tried to free her with a flare screen. Yep. Xavier drops back into their zone. Seagrist down into the corner it goes. Gadeka up to get it, picks up her dribble. The defense here on the possession with seven. Villanova settles for a three and Ross gets the rebound. Xavier's defense forcing a contested three. Xavier needs to score in the fourth. Sharps off a screen off the front rim. Rebound by Kerry Gross. Another offensive rebound for Xavier. Gross down the right side to the cup for two. Boy, Xavier needed that one. First points of the fourth. That was a long drought for the Musketeers. And a timeout taken by Coach Brenna and the Wildcats with 4-10 remaining. Villanova on top by one. Harry Peretta wants a timeout. I think he, he wants to get a good shot right yeah. here. I don't think he's going to change up defenses or anything like that. He just wants to get a good look for his Villanova team. We see here Kerry Gross with just a nice drive and Little scoop shot underneath Segrist. You know, we've seen Xavier try to attack Segrist a little bit when they when she is on the defensive end, and I would not be surprised to continue 
to see a little bit more of that. That might be one of the best looks that Xavier can get at the offensive end, particularly with some of the struggles that they've had here in the second half. Kenzie Gardler out of the timeout. Segrist now drops it off to Gardler. Here's Herlihy. Air ball controlled by Deja Ross. Deja Ross has been phenomenal on the board. She's got 10 rebounds now in the contest tonight. Dunham trying to use the screen. Here comes Wasselson, who's been very quiet. Wasselson 0 for 3 tonight from the field. Dunham. Deja Ross, too strong. And a big board from Onkin. Referee has to clarify a foul. The players went to play through the whistle. But yet another foul, Rich. Yeah, they got that one on Lauren Wasselson. Lauren Wassel, I mentioned it earlier, she's just been really quiet tonight. Has not scored, only taken three shots. You know, Melanie Moore, when she talked to us today, I asked her, you know, which of your players have improved the most? And she looked at me in the eye and said, Wasselson has improved the most. And she's got, we've seen some players really improve throughout the course of the year on this Xavier team. Onkin hits the first free throw. Genrich, a foul in the backcourt, leading to points for the Wildcats. This is the second free throw was Onkin. It's still a two-point game. Xavier being outscored 10-2 by the Wildcats, and Pranger traveled. Another turnover. Yep, she knew she wanted to drive right away and just didn't get her feet set. Erlahi over to James. Outside the perimeter right now for the Wildcats. In the middle of the lane, great find, but Segrist unable to finish. That was similar to a nice little cut that Segrist tried to make, splitting some defenders in that zone earlier. That time, a little better contested by Xavier. Villanova won for their last eight, haven't hit a shot from the field in almost three minutes. Sharps feeding to the post. Pranger spins to the left, has the shot blocked. That went off of Pranger. What a play. That great move, or excuse me, great defensive play by Gadeka. See, Pranger uses that counter move, and Gadeka read it out, blocked the shot. 30 on 30 crime. That's a clean block, too. Good piece of officiating. Mel Moore wanted a foul, but Decanter knew. And He's one of the best in the business. Gadeka up top, James. Now Gadeka coming to get it. Hands off to Segrist. 10 on the shot clock. Gadeka underneath. Spins to her right. And no call. Xavier with less than two minutes left. Wasselson explodes to the hoop. And ties the game at 52. Oh, I thought Lauren Wasselson might have got away with a travel there. A little hop step there when she picked it up. Musketeers will take it, though. They will on a tie game. We're locked in as close as it can be on the Big East Digital Network. There you see Wasselson. Nice drive to the basket. Yeah, she shuffled her feet there when she picked it up. Yep. A break for the Musketeers. Yeah, as Wasselson, you can see, tough take, driving all the way through, and what a time for her to get on the scoreboard. Yeah, Xavier hasn't gotten very many breaks all season no. long. They get one there, see if it plays a role in the outcome of, of this one. But Harry Peretta with three timeouts left, uses one of them, and you know, I, if, if I, obviously he's drawing something up to try to get either Mary Gadeka or Maddie Segris, the ball, probably Maddie Segris, just the, the way that she's gone here in the second half. But um, uh, really interesting. Uh, maybe chess match, maybe uh, just for a possession, uh, Melanie Moore 
changes looks up defensively. You never know uh, with this this particular possession here. So, well, 52 all. About a minute and a half left. Paul Fritschner, Rich Hoyt with you on the Big East Digital Network in what has been a very fun affair here from the Cintas Center. Davis stays in the zone. Down in the corner, it's the Wildcats. Fresh shot clock, now it's already down to 10 as Gadeka lets one fly from straight away, but an offensive board keeps the possession alive. Big shot clock rebound. back to 20. Gadeka passed it up to James. The extra pass off the back iron. Rebound controlled by the Wildcats. Gadeka again to James. The extra pass into the corner. And Villanova goes 0 for 3 on the trip. It leads to a foul on the Wildcats. Xavier will have possession with 62 seconds remaining. That was not a good foul by Maddie Segrist. That is her fourth. That's another one, 90 feet from the basket. Saw Xavier with a few of those early on in the quarter. Just not an intelligent foul by the freshman. Gross. See if, see if Xavier tries to attack her again. There's Gross. And she'll try to earn it from the line. As Hurley is called for the foul. It's only Hurley, he's first. You can see the push from behind, but foul trouble. Raven James and Maddie Segris both with four fouls for the Villanova Wildcats. Gary Gross steps to the line and makes the first. Xavier's been pretty good from the free throw line tonight, nine for 11. That was something else Melanie Moore told us they needed to improve on. Second free throw falls through the strings, and Xavier now with a two-point edge. As Peretta calls another timeout. Those are big free throws by Kerry Gross. So now, Rich, if you're Villanova, you have 48 seconds remaining, trailing by two. What are you talking about here in this timeout? Well, I'm, I'm talking about trying to get Maddie Segrist the ball in the middle of that zone. You know, maybe you can screen the middle of it and uh, try to free her up because that's that's where the you know if somebody catches it in there, that's where the defense defense is going to come from from the, the the back middle part of that zone. Yep. Xavier has communicated very well defensively tonight, I feel like, Rich. Yeah, they really have. They, you know, we've seen some spurts that Villanova has had offensively, but I think Melanie Moore is going to be you know, satisfied with the way that her defense has played and the way the zone has played. Fans on their feet here at the Centa Center. Hurley for three wow. from long range to give the Wildcats a one-point lead. Big-time shot by Hurley. What a game she's had. Stopping the action. Referee's going to go over to the table here. I think what they're going to look at, D. Cantor's coming over there. I think a little bit of time ran off after the shot went through the basket, of course, under a minute, that clock should stop right away, and it didn't. So we'll get a great look at this one here. It's not going to be a whole lot of time difference. And we could be talking about maybe a second and, and a half. 33.4, so yeah, you're about right there. An extra second and change on the clock, which could always make a difference here in a game like this. One second, a lot of time. Absolutely. This stage of the game, you know, with a, a one possession game, it certainly is a big, big call here to get the get that right. And they will put up 33.4. Nice job of officiating. Good spot on that, too. Only one second. 1 1.4 ran off the clock, and the referees correct the issue. Great crew here tonight. Xavier will roll the ball to Aaliyah Dunham. 
About a two second difference between the shot and game clock. Gary Gross attacking again, has the ball blocked, and it was last touched by Mary Gadeka. Another clutch defensive showing on that possession from Villanova, but Xavier keeps it. Nice block there again. A little, little contact that time, but this is the Big East. Play through it. <laughs> <laughs> and a timeout taken. Xavier with two timeouts remaining. Now make it one, and Villanova with one themselves. But that last three by the Wildcats to give the visitors a one-point lead straight away. Hurley from long range, clutch shot, Rich. Yeah, the defense adjusts and then just leaves the top of it open, and Hurley, he got to a great spot and knocked it down. She's been phenomenal, 16 points, fourth three-pointers, added eight rebounds and four assists. She stuffed the stat sheet tonight. We talked about how Harry Peretta needs a third score to go along with Segrist, Segrist and Gadeka. And Hurley, he, he, she, really she's been that over the last seven games now, and this is as good of a performance as she's had. Hurley, he was 16 tonight, Segrist with 21, Gadeka with 11. But it'll be Xavier basketball. About a two and a half second difference between the shot and game clock. Inbound, tipped. Deja Ross has it, now Dunham. Wasselson drives to the hoop. Wasselson with space, can't convert. And the ball last touched by the Wildcats. But they're gonna go to the replay monitor to make sure they get this call right. This is such a crucial decision could see Wasselson splitting through. Gadeka reaching in. Wasselson spinning it off the glass. Now, who did it go off of? Kerry Gross came in. I could, you know, from that angle, look like it went off of Segrist. Let's see it again here. Ooh, was that Ayanna Townsend that got her hand in there? Uh, it looks like. And Gross had her hand in there. Now, I've got to remember, the call on the floor yeah. went the way of the Musketeers, so it would take, as they always say, indisputable evidence, and that was a quick call yeah. by the officiating crew. It stays with the Musketeers. 14.1 left. Nice job of the officials of being really efficient yep. with that, that decision. 14.1 left. Melanie Moore has that one timeout left. Shot clock is off. Dunham inbounding from the baseline. Dunham gets it in to Kerry Gross. Fade away, around and out. Wasselson, the offensive board, puts it up. It's blocked. Segrist, the rebound. And with 8.1 left, Segrist will go to the line. Well, Xavier with a couple looks there. I think Wasselson forced that one a little bit. I don't know if she didn't know how much time was left, but really, really had time. Maybe Xavier calls a timeout in that situation to get themselves organized after the offensive rebound. But, you know, the, the, the downside to, to that would have been that they don't, don't have the, the timeout to use now after Maddie Segrist's free throws. And Segrist misses the first. <laughs> Harry Peretta just kind of shakes his head. This is a big one. Second, Short. off the rim. And a timeout taken, Villanova. A one point lead. And a timeout taken, but Villanova, that one point lead and has, what can Xavier do here? Well, you know, I've talked about attacking Maddie Seeger. She's got those four fouls, you know, so is she going to be willing to be aggressive to, and, and risk giving up that foul. So um, I don't know who's going to – who's she's guarded Lauren Wasselson for, for part of the night. So maybe they try to attack with Wasselson again. I think ideally they're going to try to get Aaliyah Dunham or Carrie Gross going downhill to the basket. 
Ball advances into the front court. 7.2 left. Seagrass guarding Deja Ross here. Xavier out of timeouts. The inbound to Dunham. Xavier trailing by one. Dunham attacking. Foul. And the ball last touched by Villanova out of bounds. Looked like some contact there, but no call. Gross checks back into the game. Sharps comes out. 1.6 left. Xavier won't have much time here. Like some contact there, but no call. And now. Yeah, timeout was called by Mary Gadeka. Mary Gadeka gets a timeout. 1.6 to go, and Xavier can go talk to Coach Moore, get one play call off this inbounds pass. Now, really interesting situation there because. That timeout needed to be called before the official handed the ball to the inbounder. That's the only time that Villanova can call that timeout. But I think if if you're you're Xavier here, you know, you're going to try to get a shooter. And they took Morgan Sharps out of the game, so you know maybe Ayana Townsend off of a back cut here to the basket, and then maybe Lauren Wasselson coming off of a screen. Townsend, Ross, Wasselson, Gross, and Dunham on the court. 1.6 to go. Ross, the inbound at the buzzer. Gross is blocked, and Villanova survives on the road. The Wildcats in a close one at the Centos Center take care of the Xavier Musketeers. Well, really a, a tough, hard-fought game. We kind of expected it, expected low scoring. You know, I thought... Maddie Segrist and Bridget Hurley, Hurley he were phenomenal for Villanova this evening and ultimately why the Wildcats and Harry Peretta pull out the victory. Villanova by one. We'll be back after this. Talk to Maddie Segrist, top performer for the Wildcats. We'll be back in just a moment on the Big East Digital Network. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. What is a Villanovan in 30 seconds? Well, Villanovans aim high. Top 50 national university high. We think fast and stay connected. V's up. Villanovans think deeply, push boundaries, and go, go, go! Still with me? We climb corporate ladders in these ladders. This campus is our home, but you can find us almost anywhere. Villanovans have big hearts to solve even bigger problems, and we celebrate together. Ignite change. Go Nova. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. It was a thriller here at the Cinta Center, but the Villanova Wildcats survive on the road, 55 to 54 at the Cinta Center. Paul Fritscher, Rich Hoyt, and we're joined now by Maddie Segrist. And Maddie, a phenomenal night for you. You got into foul trouble late, but you were able to survive. You stayed in the game. 21 points for you, again, in t over the 20 point mark. I mean, you dialed it up there late, and you came in clutch when your team needed it. Oh, thank you. I mean, Xavier's a much better team than their record shows, and I think like every game is like in the Big East is a dogfight. So uh, we knew it was going to be tough. I mean, we didn't think it was going to be this tough, yeah. but um, I'm glad we won on the road. The first time the, you guys met, it was a 12-point game, but it was closer than maybe 12 points. Yeah. What did you expect out of these, out of this team? Definitely like the second half of the Big East. Like just from what I've seen so far, everyone they like know how to guard you a little better. They know your stuff a little better, so they definitely like came out very strong tonight, and we, we were expecting that. You guys were taking a lot of threes early on in the first <laughs> quarter. Was that the game plan, and then finally you worked it inside, or was it that the threes weren't falling? How would you guys attack um, that? Well, 
Coach Prada loves <laughs> loves the three ball, and I like if we we were getting open shots, and then like I know personally I couldn't hit one to <laughs> save my life, so um, we knew we had to work inside a little bit to try to come back. Yeah, and you specifically against Xavier's zone, you were able to get in the inside of that zone a little bit. Was was that something that Coach talked about and drew up, or was that something you just kind of saw something and had a feel for it? Uh, he he told us to get to the open spot wherever that was whether it was on the perimeter or inside, and I saw the opening inside, so I fi figured I should take it. Yeah, Bridget Hurley he had a great yeah, uh, evening she's, for you. She's great. She just plays so hard every possession offensively and defensively, and, like, I'm looking, like, now, like, Bridget, Mary, can't, everyone, every single person contributed. Like, rebounds were huge this game. I mean, Mary had a double-double. That was the quietest double-double I ever saw. But yeah. she's like, she just does the little things, and so does Bridget. It's like such great leadership, and, you know, it makes you like, you want to be like that when you're an upperclassman. Well, you're having an outstanding freshman year. You've owned the, uh, the Big East Freshman <laughs> of the Week honors all year with nine of those. Uh, d were you expecting this much individual success this early on in your career? Definitely not. Uh, no way. But um, I'm so grateful for the opportunity, and all my teammates are so encouraging. Like, it, they've been great so far. Well, congratulations. A phenomenal performance tonight for the Villanova Wildcats who take it by one here at the Cintas Center. For our producer, Jason Dudley, for Rich Hoyt, I'm Paul Fritchner saying so long, and thank you for listening to tonight's broadcast of Big East Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Villanova 55, Xavier 54 on a Friday night.